Over the years, I developed a lot of unique ways to manage my ADHD, and part of the reason for this is because I was unmedicated and undiagnosed until very recently. So in this video, I wanted to go over some of the stuff that I discovered, and hopefully it'll help you. If you feel like anything in this video doesn't work for you or it might not work for you, comment down below what are some alternatives that help you. And for some of these tips, make sure to stick around all the way to the end because some of them may seem impossible at first, but then when you kind of factor in some of the other tips I have, they all kind of build off of each other. So the first section of the video is the biggest thing that people with ADHD struggle with, which is how to do things that you don't want to do. So the first method that I'm gonna say is add intense pressure and challenge. For example, studying for a test is something that I absolutely hate doing and I just cannot get myself to do until it's two days before the exam. So what I decided to start doing is just to wait until two days before the exam. What I would do is I would make sure that I have nothing to do on those two days at all and then put my maximum effort into learning stuff as quickly as I possibly can and learning it as well as I can. These two things, when you try to have something done really fast and do it with really high skill, can be super motivating for the ADHD brain. Challenge and competition and stuff like that all always riles us up, gets us excited. And I found that for me especially, this was super helpful. You can also apply this to stuff that's a little bit more boring or mundane, like laundry or cleaning. What I like to do is I like to take these tasks and be like, how fast can I get this done? Just adding that little bit of challenge or like, can I do this in under three minutes? Or can I do this in under five minutes? Little stuff like that can make it just a little bit more engaging and fun to do these boring kind of mundane activities that we need to do. The second thing you can do is to pair it with something fun. For more mundane tasks, this is super useful. So like laundry, cleaning, all that stuff. Pair it with a podcast that you really like, have a video going on in the background, have a TV show going on. This is something a lot of people will do, but it can be helpful to have it like as a thing in your head. You know, if you're really looking forward to watching a show or something, think, oh, you know what? I can watch this show while I do these four or five tasks that I need to do that are really mindless. Another big thing that's kind of a problem for people with ADHD is taking large, complex, difficult tasks and then executing on them. So an example of this can be like writing an essay. This is something that is absolute torture for the ADHD brain. Even thinking about writing an essay makes me want to vomit. But what you can do that I found makes it really fun and effective for me to get these kinds of really big, long, complex, boring tasks done that require you to follow, you know, like a rubric or a specific set of instructions is the following. You want to keep in mind that whenever you complete a task, your brain gets kind of a burst of dopamine. Completing tasks is what actually fuels us and gives us motivation. Even for people without ADHD, this is super helpful. So what you can do is focus everything on just completing tasks. And the way we can do this is take this complex task of writing an essay and break it down into extremely small parts. So for example, creating a Word document, writing your name on the Word document, giving a title to the Word document, skimming through the rubric, finding the main prompt you need to analyze, getting a one sentence summary of what your response to that prompt might look like, so on and so forth. Then once you kind of have this list of tasks, just ignore everything except for the very first one. And then use the completion of tasks to kind of guide you along and give you motivation and energy. Another thing that sometimes helps that's kind of opposite of all these tips is just taking it slow. Sometimes I'll find for work, if I have to do something really boring like documentation or like read a really tedious set of instructions or something like that. I find that if I just kind of tell myself, I'm just going to kind of take it easy just for 15 minutes, I'm just going to kind of look around, see what's going on. It can sometimes help me just ease in a little bit. Now for the more mundane stuff that you have to do, like cleaning and laundry and all this stuff, a lot of these tips can be really enhanced if you kind of keep the next part in mind, which is doing everything in bulk and lowering these boring kind of cleaning tasks to an absolute minimum. Let me explain what I mean. So an odd thing that I've always done that I didn't know why until I got diagnosed was I would always have massive trash bags and trash cans, and I would have a massive laundry basket as big as it could be and I would always have it like stuffed to the brim or overflowing. And I realized the reason for this and why the system kind of worked really well for me is again because the ADHD brain hates doing these mundane boring kind of tasks. So if you kind of minimize the amount of times that you have to do them and when you do do them it's a huge kind of big task it can make things a little bit easier. I found that having to do laundry like maybe once or twice a month and taking out the garbage at that kind of same frequency actually helps save my mental health quite a bit. I also build out everything in my life to make it so that I have to do these things as few times as possible in the first place. For example, with trash, I just don't have that many things that I will throw away in general. When it comes to laundry, I have a lot of different pairs of pajamas and stuff like that. And again, a lot of underwear, stuff like that, so that I don't have to do laundry very frequently. My room as well is set up in such a way that I really don't have that much of a mess. I will eat in one exact spot every single time and I'll only have to clean that spot and not much else. I also like living in smaller spaces because again, the smaller a space, the less you have to clean. All these kind of little things that you can do to kind of, you know, have stuff happen in bulk where you just have a lot of clean that gets done at once and then you don't have to think about it for several weeks on end can be really helpful I've found for at least for my brain. It also creates a bit of that pressure and that urgency to like get stuff done really quick which again can make these boring kind of tasks a lot more fun. With keeping a clean room though one of the biggest things that people with ADHD struggle with is they need visual cues in order to remember things. So how do you keep a clean room when you need shit out everywhere in order to remember to do it? There's a couple of different ways we can do this and one of the biggest ways is a drawer system that I've developed over the years. So I need visual reminders in order to remember things. Doing things like taking medication, taking supplements, stuff like that. I need those kinds of reminders. Without a visual 
reminder, I will forget to do these things. But again, if there's stuff everywhere, I'm gonna feel distracted, it's gonna disorient me, I don't like things being messy. And again, when people come over, it's nice to have everything already clean. So what I do is I kind of take the mess and I just hide it in drawers. And so the next question is, is if you can't see it, if it's in a drawer, how do you remember to do it? What I'll do is I'll kind of take habits that I already have every single day that I'm gonna do. So for example, a lot of us will check our phones, I'll check my iPad, I'll make coffee every single morning. I'm gonna have these specific habits that I kind of do anyway. And what I'll do is let's say that, you know, I check my phone every single morning. I'll put it in a drawer that also has all of my supplements and everything like that that I need to do every morning right next to it. So for example, one of my drawers, super messy, but it has my deodorant, it has all my supplements, it has all my medication, so on and so forth. And so when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, I need to go check my phone or something like that. I'll go open it up and I'll say, oh, okay, here's all the stuff I need to take and I'll go ahead and take it. I'll also have like a glass of water just like on my nightstand so that when I wake up, I see all these supplements. I'm like, oh, okay, I have to take these, but I need water. And then I'll see the water kind of waiting for me. So how do I remember to get the water? I drink coffee every morning as well. And I never forget to drink my coffee because I need it to function. So what I'll do is next to all my coffee kind of stuff, I'll have like a glass that I put there and I'll remember to fill it up in the morning. Cause again, I'll see it when I go to make coffee, I'll fill it up with water. I'll bring it upstairs and I'll put it on my nightstand. And so that glass of water is always there as my supplement water. And when I'm leaving, I'll put a glass next to my coffee stuff again that I can use the next day. So that's just kind of an example of how things can work. Use your kind of existing habits and things that you do every day anyways, and use them to kind of draw you to places so that you can remember to do stuff. This works great for things like supplements and stuff like that, but how do you remember stuff like meetings? And the way that I do this is using an app called Tiodia, but really any to-do list app can do. You just kind of have to follow this same system. Essentially what I'll do is anytime anyone asks me to do anything, I will immediately pull out my to-do list app and I'll write it down. And how do I remember to check this to-do list all the time? The way that I remember is I just always have it open on my computer no matter what. In fact, right now, I'm pretty sure I have it open. It'll always just kind of be up and it'll just be a reminder of like, okay, I need to do these things. And so I'll constantly be blasted by reminders of just like, oh, shit, that's something I need to do. The to-do list kind of becomes my second brain as well. So whenever I'm just kind of like sitting around and I'm like, oh, I feel like I need to do something. What do I need to do? I've just gotten in the habit now of checking my to-do list being like, oh, okay, that's the thing I need to do. I kind of think of it as like a personal assistant or something where like, I don't remember anything that I need to do. I just let that thing remember what I need to do. And then every time I feel like I should be doing something, I'll just check that. So that system works really well when it comes to remembering simple things that you need to do. But what about stuff that's more time bound? So for example, like meetings that you have to remember when they're gonna happen, appointments that you have to make, homework that's due on a specific date. The way that we do this is we kind of combine to-do lists with calendars. Now, there are quite a few nuances to using a calendar system and a to-do list system that you need to keep in mind if you have ADHD. So don't worry if it sounds intimidating right now. I'm gonna explain everything. Stick around for a little bit. So the first part about using a calendar is you have to realize that you don't really have to follow the calendar. You just have to use it in order to understand time better. The way I think about the calendar is the same way I think about the to-do list. It's kind of a second brain for me because my brain doesn't really understand how long things are gonna take, how much time I have left in the day, so on and so forth, having a visual representation is extremely helpful for me. Time is no longer just this kind of thing. It becomes like a concrete thing that I can see visually and visually time is a lot easier to understand. You wanna kind of also think of your calendar as a second to-do list. So if you have your like kind of main to-do list where you have all the stuff that you need to get done, you can take that to-do list, you can move it into your calendar and then give time slots for everything that needs to be done. One of the biggest problems is we know what needs to be done, but we need to decide what order it needs to be done and how do we prioritize. All these things are very hard for the ADHD brain. So how do we prioritize. So there's a simple way that I like to prioritize tasks. Typically you want to do this at like the beginning of every week, maybe even the beginning of every day. It just depends on what you prefer. And you get a list of all the stuff that you have to do for the week. Writing it all out in an app like to do, or even having a physical kind of planner can be really helpful for this. Once you have every single task, you want to assign a due date to all of them. But if you have stuff that doesn't really have due dates, have a date next to it that's like the last possible day you want to get it done. Once you have due dates and you have all these tasks, sort them by due date. The earlier the due date, the higher up it's going to be sorted. The later the due date, the lower it's going to be sorted. If you have stuff that's due on the same day, you want to put the easiest tasks first and put the hardest tasks last. Now that you have all of this done, you can take all of the stuff that's on your to-do list based on the due date and then kind of map it out across the week. The reason you want to put the easiest task first is because oftentimes kind of starting with the hardest task is just going to lead you to procrastinate. You're just not going to get started until the very end of the day and then you won't finish the hard task and you won't finish the easy task. You'll feel really shameful of yourself and you'll feel really unproductive. So start with the easiest task, get some stuff done. You can get some initial momentum with the easy task. And then as the day goes on, you can move into the harder task as you've built up a bit of momentum and energy. So one of the hardest parts about all of this is how do you keep up with this, right? This is a lot of different stuff to keep in mind with the planning, with the to-do list, all this stuff. So what I like to do is weekly planning. I pick one day every week, typically Sunday, and I will just do this whole thing once a week. I'll write out all my tasks, order them by due date and priority, and then spread them across the week and then put them in my calendar. So I know when I'm doing what. In my calendar as well, I'll have meetings and stuff like that. This system is super easy. Just do it 
once a week, just kind of have everything there and then start knocking stuff out as you go along throughout the week. I found that this can be super helpful for me because anytime I'm just kind of sitting around and stuff like that, I'll just be like, hmm, what is it that I have to do? I'll check my calendar. I'm like, oh, okay, this is the thing I have to do. And keep in mind, you can be super, super flexible. I move things around on my calendar all the time. Definitely do not feel like you have to follow it rigidly. Just do this once a week at the start of every week and you'll be good. Now, the last concern that I kind of want to address in this video is going to be like, what about the times where you have something planned, but you don't really feel like doing it? This happens to me all the time. And the biggest thing you want to keep in mind is always have a buffer. If something is due on a Friday, try to get it done on a Wednesday. Try to even get it done on a Monday. And the reason for this is so that you can procrastinate. The thing is we are going to procrastinate. We're not going to get everything done on time. So build this into your schedule. I always pretend like stuff is due like four days before it actually is. Every time I have the thing planned, I'm like, oh, I got to do this. If I feel like procrastinating, most of the time it's actually okay. Build into your schedule procrastination and not doing stuff. Your schedule should be able to always accommodate for these things because they're going to happen and that's totally okay. Having that kind of time built into my schedule or being able to procrastinate stuff really helps me because it helps me stick with this habit a lot better and it helps me be a lot more organized overall. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if these tips help and what you think about them. And again, comment down below any stuff that works for you that maybe I didn't mention or if you disagree with any of the points, comment them down below and tell me what you do instead. The more people's experiences we can have, the more helpful it can be and maybe someone can learn something in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Take care.